Hi everyone, my name is Lauren Rangette and I am a PhD student in chemistry in the Simmerling Lab over in the Locker Center. And today I'll be talking about using computational modeling to understand biological processes. So, if we look at the root of biological processes and functions, we start with proteins. And a protein is a long string of amino acids. And then these long strings of amino acids can get all jumbled up and they get into these folded structures that can tell us a lot about different functions or other different things about these proteins. So if we look again at that long string of amino acids, it doesn't, each amino acid doesn't just care about who its neighbors are because it could end up sitting in next to any other amino acid along that chain. And each of those interactions are going to be different depending on which amino acid is next to a different one. So we want to learn more about those interactions to learn more about the proteins and to learn more about these processes and these functions of these proteins. And so in order to break down and to look at each amino acid, we want to look at it in terms of the atoms and the bonds that define each amino acid. So each of these atoms has a different radius and a different charge, and that's also going to affect the different bonds and the angles that are in each standard amino acid. And so in order to learn more about that, we get to the computers part, which gets us into the fun math and computers that we all like. So in our lab, we do that using what's called a force field, and members of our lab help to develop a force field. So a force field is a collection of equations and associated constants designed to reproduce molecular geometry and selected properties of tested structures. Now we don't develop the equations, but we do help for the constants. And so this is what that looks like. So we have some non-bonded down at the bottom, and then our bonded the top three interactions that we want to look at. And each of these is going to have some sort of constant. So for instance, for the bond, we can like it to a uh, spring. So we want to look at the stretching of that bond or then the bending of the angle and find those force constants that are associated. And that's going to depend, too, on our atom types. And notice I didn't say chemical element. So instead of just looking at the chemical element from the periodic table, we want to learn more about each atom that's going to be bonded or put into an angle. So for instance, if we think about carbon, it's going to depend, maybe this carbon is part of a long organic chain where it's other only seeing carbon and hydrogen surrounding it. But it could also be surrounded by oxygen, and that's going to have a different behavior, even if it's still bonded just to another carbon. Or it could be part of a larger ring where it's also part of carbon. So all of these different environments are going to influence it. So we have a large number of atom types that we want to look at. So our lab is really looking at that center dihedral component and how to uh, use different computational methods with molecular mechanics and quantum mechanics to find um, different force constants. So we can associate that with different parameters and all labs, um, users across the world can take their selected structures and pair them with these parameters to learn more about proteins and make cool things. Thank <laughs> you.